So from the University of Tokyo, we have my ladies and gentlemen, Fumika Muraya. All applause to her. So nice to have you, Fumika. The stage is yours over here. Hello, everyone. I'm Fumika Moria. I'm a second year master student in the University of Tokyo. I'm interested in the mechanism of brains related to learning and memory. So before talking about the detail of my research, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. So when I was an undergraduate student, I majored in physics. What attracted me the most is that physics is interpreting complicated phenomena of this world as simple principles using mathematics. And our brains can be target of physics as well. For example, our brains are composed of lots of neurons, and they're processing information by each neuron emit electrical signals. And the dynamics of each neuron can be described as a mathematical model, which is called Hodgkin-Huxley model. When I saw it for the first time, I thought, wow, it's so amazing. And now my measure is neuroengineering, and I use the device, micro device, which can record the electrical activity of the neural network. And if the neuron fires, I mean emit electrical signals, spikes can be observed. And also I use optical techniques to observe how the neural network looks like. So now I'll expand on my research. To begin with, I'll tell you the background of my research. As I mentioned before, our brains are composed of more than 100 billion of neurons, and they're processing information. When you are embryos of babies, newborn neurons are produced to make more developed brain. But even after you get to mature, newborn neurons are produced continuously throughout life. This phenomenon is called adult neurogenesis. But this happens in only two specific regions of brains, and hippocampus is one of them. Have you ever heard of the hippocampus? Are you nice? <laughs> yeah, hippocampus has a crucial role for learning and memory. So many researchers have thought there should be a relationship between other neurogenesis and learning and memory. For example, in the brain of patients with aging, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, abnormal decrease or increase in other neurogenesis has been found. And there are several ways to research the mechanism brain. And oh, sorry. As a powerful top-scale approach, behavior experiment is sometimes used. But behavior experiments using rats or mice have reported contradictory results about the relationship between adult neurogenesis and learning and memory. So I focus on the level of neural network because it's a relatively simple experimental system, so I can easily control the parameter that I want to focus on. I told you that adult neurogenesis is a phenomenon that newborn neurons are produced con continuously throughout life. So during adult neurogenesis, newborn neurons grow into immature neurons, then into mature ones. So during adult neurogenesis, immature neurons must always exist in our brains. And they're very special because they are known to fire more easily than mature ones. So, the goal of my research is to understand how learning and memory are affected by adult neurogenesis. To achieve this goal, I focus on the level of the neural network. And the question of my research is this. How do excitable immature neurons change electrical activity of mature neural network? So I use this micro device, which has tiny electrodes in the area of two millimeters times two millimeters. And on each electrode, there are around five neurons. And there are lots of neurons over the entire of the electrodes. And those neurons can connect with each other by being cultured. And interestingly, after being cultured for more than four weeks, they show spikes simultaneously. First, I record this synchronized firing. And second, I gave stimulation to these neural network. For the test, I gave two types of stimulations, pink and blue pattern, alternatively, many times. 
Then I trained the neural network to learn only pink pattern by giving simulations at high frequency. And after training, I set the test period again. So I gave two types of stimulations again. And I counted the number of spikes in response to each pattern. If the neural network learned the specific pattern, then the number of spikes in response to that pattern is expected to increase. And I did these experiments to the mature neural network with and without immature neurons. Here, I'll briefly tell you the results I got. First, I found that the existence of immature neurons reduced the synchronicity of mature neural network. Second, I found that the existence of immature neurons facilitated learning of not only trained pattern, but also untrained pattern. And I hope my research will contribute to helping people who have difficulty of learning and memory. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> high five, amazing. Welcome over here and oh, take all the audience applaud one more time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> fumiko, fumiko, fumiko. <laughs> Feels good? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> amazing presentation. I have a question which I really need to ask, or else I will not be able to sleep for the rest of my life, I think, actually, <laughs> because all this passion you have for the brain and so, mm -hmm. what makes you most fascinated about the brain? What in the brain, off the brain, between the brain is the <laughs> most interesting? Like, most uh, interesting point yeah. about mm. the brain. Um, even though the science is developed, mm. there are many mysteries in the brain, so... <laughs> ah. And also, actually, my grandmother has a Parkinson's disease, and mm -hmm. that's why I got interested in my, the mechanism brain. Oh, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. That's, uh, that's nice, and um, so much mystery uh, around uh, the brain, yeah. Yeah. So do you think there's, like, so much more to uh, mm -hmm. discover? Like, I is it possible the following years, you think, to get even more information about it? Or mm -hmm. does people believe we are f f finished research about our brain, or what, what do you say? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> discovering new things in our brains is very, very difficult things, but yeah. hopefully in the near future, I want to achieve. <laughs> That's good. We will support her? Yes, yes indeed. Yeah, we will support her fully. Yeah. yeah. We, we wish you all the best on the journey, and we are super convinced, me and the whole audience here and also on the live cam, that you will succeed <laughs> and find even more mysteries and find more answers. Yeah. <laughs> so give all the best and biggest, warmest applause you can ever do. So <laughs> thank you so much, Fumika. I can take the clicker again, okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.